Hey everyone, it's Oliver. Today I'm going to be reviewing the McMaster Mechatronics Engineering Program and telling you all of the good, bad, and ugly and whether or not you should choose it as your program. I want to preface this video by saying that I've only fully completed three years of the educational requirements for this program, so I haven't quite done my fourth year yet. So this is just going to be a partial review and I'll create another review video once I'm done my fourth year. So with that out of the way, let's get into some pros and cons about the McMaster Mechatronics program. The first pro and the thing that I like about this field is that you get a lot of different engineering fields incorporated into one program. I often pride myself in being a generalist and understanding a lot about a lot of different things. Now this does obviously have its downsides, namely that you aren't exactly super specialized in one specific topic. And my rebuttal to this particular argument would be that in every type of engineering you have courses where you learn about things that you are never going to actually end up using in your job. I know, big shocker. So in my opinion, as long as there are enough classes that give you some employable skills, you're going to be pretty well off, and outside of that, you'll be doing your projects and coursework and whatever else to make your resume look good. There is something to be said for having a good, broad, and general knowledge base, but I'm also someone who values efficiency, and having content that doesn't directly apply can make you feel like you're wasting your time. I find that it's in these courses where I feel like the content is unrelated to my degree that I don't end up doing very well because I adopt this attitude that I'm never going to end up needing this in my real life anyway, so what's the point of doing well in this course? In hindsight, I don't really think this way of thinking has served me well because I don't really have a choice in taking these particular courses. So there's no reason to complain because taking a random civil engineering course or a random thermodynamics course is exactly what I signed up for when I decided to go to university for engineering. So I don't recommend taking this attitude towards any course that you take in your undergrad because, as you might imagine, it can end up harming you and harming your GPA and causing you to underperform on your own expectations. Now the second point is related to the first pro and that's essentially that you can really be anything in this mechatronics engineering program. If you want to spend time focusing on the software side of things, you can end up working for a big tech company as a software engineer, or if you spend lots of time delving into mechanical topics, you can end up as a mechanical engineer. I find this to be a good and bad thing about mechatronics, and in your earlier years, it kind of feels like you have all the options in the world and that you can work in any engineering job that you want. The only problem with this is that you will end up having to spend some time upskilling to get to the same level as somebody else who may have gotten into educated in a more focused field. But I realize now that the same goes for pretty much every other engineering student as well, regardless of what field they are in, because the job description almost never matches exactly what you've learned in university. A student who only goes to their classes, never joins a team, doesn't work on personal projects, doesn't try to get a related internship, will likely never get hired because they're not learning how to apply the skills that they've gained. A big part of university, which they suck at promoting by the way, is finding ways to apply the things that you've learned inside of the classroom. Because if you think about it, it's really not the university's problem if you don't get a job when you graduate. As long as you finish your degree, the university's happy and they're getting their money and you get this piece of paper from them. Now, this being said, that doesn't mean that universities don't give you these opportunities to learn and apply your skills in a practical manner. There are tons of teams and clubs that you can apply to and that you can join and that can really help you develop these skills in order to be employable. Many universities even encourage their students to launch their own team, so if there's nothing that you're interested in, you can take your own initiative and try to start something and build up a following, I guess you can call it, from other students. There are so many good transferable skills that can be gained from these kinds of experiences, it's really a shame that universities don't make them mandatory and don't make it part of the curriculum. So bringing this around to maybe feeling lost in some of your earlier years, it's really easy to see how this comparison draws between applying the things you learn in the classroom and the feeling of being lost. 
If you wanna bridge that gap, the best way to do it is through experiences that are practical and that help you discover new skills. Next, I'm gonna talk about a course that I really enjoyed and that was the Embedded Systems Design Courses. Now, I took my first one of these courses in third year, but the university has now changed that to beginning in second year, which I think was an amazing decision because honestly, this course is the one course that I always pull from and put on every single resume when I'm applying to a technical position. It is so applicable. There are so many transferable skills from this course. And by putting it in second year, I think they are making more jobs so much more accessible to so many more mechatronics engineers because this type of thing is extremely practical and an extremely useful skill. And you can kind of show off the things that you do in the labs. Um, it's really useful. I still have some kind of older videos of what we did in the labs, but we essentially built little circuits on microcontrollers, programmed them in a development environment called Kyle, and we did a whole bunch of cool stuff with these, and I really enjoyed the course. So, you know, I highly recommend um, that you guys, if you're taking Mechatronics, try and do as well as you can in this course because it is kind of the core, the soul of mechatronics, if you will. Yeah, it was a good course. There are also other courses in this program that teach you some really useful skills, even if they might not be the most interesting. For example, we took a software engineering design course in third year, in which I basically designed a graphical user interface using Python, and I then took what I created in that course co-opted it and then created a grade checkup application, which I then put on my resume and used to apply for additional jobs. So you can take things that you directly did in class and move them over to personal projects and basically modify it a little bit. And there you go, you just created something from scratch, but really you already had some background on it. This being said, I also had to have a kind of more in-depth understanding of coding languages as a whole in order to create this graphical user interface. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't study a little bit outside of my classes. And that's why I think it's really good to stay on top of these things and to try and increase your knowledge base even while you're not in school. Make sure that you break it up with non-engineering related work because if you're only focused on learning engineering skills, going to engineering school and like living and breathing engineering, you will burn out. So give yourself some other outlets go join a sports team, go get creative so that you don't absolutely fry your brain like I did in my second and third years. In this program, up until they moved the embedded systems course to second year, I found for me personally that third year was the year where things really started to come together and you really begin to understand what it means to be a mechatronics engineer. And I believe that fourth year is going to help me even expand more on that knowledge base. And another cool thing is that when you enter third year, you'll be very pleasantly surprised by how many people all of a sudden seem interested in hiring you just because you've hit the third year. Now my list of cons is a little bit shorter, but obviously they still exist. And a lot of the pros I mentioned could be spun into cons as I did a little bit earlier. But the first one is that, again, as I said, up until this past year where they moved the embedded systems course to second year, I found that you don't really learn too many useful or employable skills up until you reach the third year of this program. And since you're competing with a lot of other classmates and students from other engineering schools, Getting a job anytime before third year is extremely difficult and it can be even really difficult in third year unless you do well in these classes and you learn stuff outside of school. So it really is a huge, I guess, pile of stress to put on someone. Um, but you know, that is kind of the nature of these programs and any engineering program that you go into is going to be this way. So I don't want that to deter anyone from thinking about taking this, um, but I just do want to put the warning out there that it does require a lot of deliberate work and deliberate effort to get to the place where you want to be. And as I've already mentioned, another con is that you feel kind of lost in your earlier years. You're not sure what direction the program is trying to take you in. And I think this is actually more just a result of having a general lack of knowledge about engineering. I'm sure there are lots of students out there who already had lots of background in engineering or coding or computer science. I was not one of those students, so I did feel pretty lost in my second year. Balance this out with improving your knowledge, improving your skills, and trying to basically play catch up a little bit. Another problem with learning the most kind of important things in third and fourth year 
is that you also begin to feel the time crunch of graduation around that time, and you realize that you are really running out of time when it comes to putting together all of these skills and trying to get hired by, by a company. Because you, know, you might feel as if you haven't quite learned enough for what the company wants you to do, which is where internships come in so you can learn on the job. Realize that the things that you've learned are actually useful and that somebody requires those skills from you. You just have to understand how to put all these things that you've been learning together. Um, you know, you are actually very qualified for certain things after your third or fourth year. Whoever's hiring you, I'm sure has some level of expectation that you'll take, you know, three months, six months to ramp up, as they say, and become a profitable employee. So setting your expectations of knowing absolutely everything when you graduate is in some ways unreasonable, and you have to kind of give yourself a little bit of a break to allow yourself to realize that there is still so much to learn even after you graduate. Now, my final con that I've actually talked about many times on this channel is specific to the Mechatronics name. It confuses everyone. So most of the time, I just end up going to people and saying robotics. The catch is that it's not robotics. And if you wanna work on a robot, you can, but you have to do it outside of the classroom or you have to do it in a particular, very specific job where you're working with robots. Now, this is a problem only for people who aren't in the field. If you go and apply to a software or robotics job, they will definitely know what mechatronics is, uh, but having to explain yourself to somebody like a finance role or you wanna work in business, good luck because they have no idea what your degree is. So have fun explaining it. <laughs> Just some final nuggets of information about the things at McMaster University about the mechatronics program is that they have a lot of cool kind of related teams. The one that comes to mind immediately is the Sumobot team. It's basically a large event where you build a robot from scratch and you have them fight each other in a ring and the winning robot is whoever wins basically this sumo tournament, but they're robots, so it's pretty cool. There are also tons of other teams that you can join. You can create your own team. Generally speaking, the mechatronics program does take input from its students to make it better, which I think is a really good sign that they are willing to change and willing to move forward and improve as the years go on. So in the future, I can see this program being a very solid program. My final critique for McMaster Engineering as a whole is that they need to make the co-ops mandatory in first year, just like the University of Waterloo does. I personally think that work experience is one of the best ways to ensure that your undergrads get employed when they graduate, and by not doing that, you are not quite setting them up for failure, but you're definitely not doing a good job of setting them up for success, and I highly believe in the way that Waterloo does things, and I'm sure lots of other people do. That's why the demand is so high for that kind of program. Um, and, you know, universities try to differentiate themselves by doing things differently. And McMaster says, oh, well, our co-op program is the most flexible. And yes, it is, but it's also not mandatory, which I believe that it should be. Um, anyway, that's my final two cents about the McMaster Mechatronics Engineering Program. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Let me know what you thought down in the comments down below. Let me know if you got interested by watching this video or maybe one of my other videos, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.